I always stress about filming the, not, well, it's cause like I take screenshots from the video to do the thumbnail. And I'm always like, what kind of thumbnail am I gonna do? <laughs> but I did it. And Valentino's currently using the restroom, which is why you're hearing the, um, he always uses it whenever I'm filming. I wonder if it's a sign or a meaning. <laughs> Just kidding. I also got my cup of coffee because it's probably gonna be a long video. I feel pretty relaxed. I feel really, really good. And I was gonna film this video yesterday, but I got busy. <laughs> so we're gonna do it today. As you can see on the title, I'm going to be sharing with you eight vining plants that are my favorites and also how I care for them. So yeah, just like, I don't know. I don't know what else to say to it. I do these every now and then, like every few months and then. <laughs> it's cause I feel like nobody cares. But at the same time, I like watching those videos and I actually saw one in my, what is it, For You page. I saw one in someone's, on my subscription feed on the home on the home page and um it was really really pleasant and i was like oh my god i actually do have some vining plants that i do love a lot and i want to share them with you so yeah you can get a cup of coffee or a tea or just chill with me they kind of rims a little bit mm -mm. Excuse me, that came out so strong and that's what I need. I need like a rush. Oh, that feels good. I love me some coffee. All right, I don't know what to go first and it's already kicking in. <laughs> These plants are just so beautiful. They're all over here. Um, I guess we can start with this one. I have one in the back, just like right there. And then I have this other one and here you guys can barely see it but i both cannot tell you what it is oh by the way um because i was gonna say my brain is set to go a thousand miles per hour the seba blue is also one of my favorites it really really is it's beautiful it's bluish but i, I had to like not put too many in the list because then i would just get all of my plants <laughs> so I, this is not on the list but all of all of my plants are my favorite and the seba blue is such a classic and i mean it was such a i'm gonna speak for it a little bit but it was such a demanding plant like so many people wanted this plant and i remember like i found it like three years ago um from costa farm you know they sell it oh, you can actually see how blue it is like oh my god okay i guess I there was like a spider crawling on my skin but look this is a yellow leaf it's in the back so it's fine and there's still one right there too but this is normal um, I love Seba Blues. I actually used to have a lot of them. I had like three of them. I <clears throat> probably had like five of them in a lifetime and a lot of them I just give them away or I usually just give them away if not I throw them away because they look really really bad and I'm not gonna get too much into it but you remember like back then I had my little episodes where I was like really really down or like moving back and forth was stressing me out so much and I had to leave some plants behind so but I got another Seba Blue, I think it was in the beginning of this year and she is going to get pretty long. I do like to chop it to keep it more bushy. Um, it's just such a beautiful plant. Again, it's not on the list, but I do want to talk about it because it's such a gorgeous plant. And fun fact, if you didn't know, um, this these do develop fenestrations. Like if you give it something to climb on, it will develop holes on the leaves, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, I don't really do that because <laughs> I hate moss poles a lot and I don't really have, I don't know, I just like plants that vine. Sometimes they do get very leggy like this, which is just not bad. There are some plants that do it really, really bad. Like the green heart leaf philodendron get extremely leggy and like small, tiny leaves. But this one is pretty, pretty good. Very easy to fix uh, if you forget to water it and it loses a lot of leaves. <laughs> it's such, it's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous, so I had to hear the back. But yeah, if um so it's basically the Majula Puddles. <laughs> I was gonna talk about that one. There's one right here, and I guess I'll show it to you because like why not? I didn't want to get everything because like it could become a lot, but this is a new one that I got I think like five, four months ago, um, when I got the silver blue. No, silver blue was first and then I got this one. This does grow pretty slow. I do have my oldest one that came from a four inch pot and now she's big. 
but manjulas are just so beautiful i know some of you guys are still trying to find them and since i'm going to be talking about them i'm going to just be cleaning off the leaves because <laughs> like i just find it satisfying but it is such a beautiful plant the leaves are just so big and bold like bo not bald bold um it's just such a statement and i'm sorry that i say um a lot it's just the way I transition or like when I say that I'm trying to like say something I just you know okay but gorgeous plants beautiful so it does like I said it does take a little bit to grow compared to a lot of other plants this one does take its sweet time to grow but it's totally worth it because it is a very it's a plant that likes to stay very compact and I can show you this one too but it's just kind of heavy because we ended up repotting her on a recent video and she did go a little bit bald on top and literally what you do and i can show it my oldest one you give it a haircut you can proper cut those vines you can make a whole different plant or um you can do whatever you want with those cuttings sorry it would develop new growth on top and if it's really really happy it would also well, it could also develop new growth on the vines where you cut it off but if it's really happy it will do both of them and that's what happened to my monjula that i'm the other monjula that i'm going to show you right now these are just so beautiful and literally yesterday we did a plant shopping video going to Lowe's and Home Depot and when we went to Home Depot we saw the little tiny monjulas that's where this one came from like four I think five years ago four years ago um because it was a year later like half a year when I met my boyfriend but such a beautiful plant and <sighs> monjulas are just beautiful like I think they have a soft spot for me sometimes like the the leaves like they they're so random and like bold <laughs> like for example sometimes it will give you like a pure huge chunk of white variegation other times it will give you some nice like mix it's just it's just very very unique and it's gorgeous very compact really really fun to propagate it is kind of slow but y'all it does so good and it's not finicky and it's pretty cheap if you do find the big box stores they can also sell it in plant shops you can usually find it but they're more expensive because it's a plant shop but it's a pretty affordable plant and i think it's equally as beautiful as a variegated fiddle leaf which if you know that's a wish list plant of mine for years still very expensive i'm gonna wait until it goes down i'm not really in a rush to get it but i think it's equally as beautiful as the monjula i love the monjula so much and here is my baby <laughs> She's super duper wise and big. Um, she came from a small little, um, you know, those four inch pots. And like I said, I chopped it. You can see new shoots. And every note, almost in every note. It was just so impressive and insane when I saw that. Here's another one. Here's over here. Here's one over here. And it, like, and then it got even more was very like empty at the very top and she put out so much you can kind of see all those vines just such a beautiful plant by the way i got this planter from walmart it comes with a three set i like it a lot i lost i left the other two of my grandma's rental home a while back but i kept this one because it's my monjula i had to bring her with me um but i do want to get another another these sets so they're really really affordable and cheap they're more for outside because they have like holes and you can do it inside if you want to but it's kind of heavy so anyways it's huge it's beautiful it makes me super duper happy and this is a plant that i really really do love to stare at when i go on the balcony because i have it against the uh, by the windows outside it's just beautiful it's literally so stunning and the way that i care for it is very simple i just water it when it's dry and literally you can tell the leaves will become a little bit faded and just give it a good top watering or bottom watering whatever your watering method is and it'll perk back up and also like just caressing it like rubbing your fingers through the foliage you can usually tell if it's very firm then it's perfectly fine if you can if it feels a little bit flimsy and needs water you can do that test with a lot of plants but over time like you'll get it and it's a pretty easy plant to look after i swear <laughs> it's not really finicky at all beautiful plant i love it so much and highly recommend it if you don't have one and i know a lot of you guys don't have one and y'all are looking for it do not give up. I'm, it's still kind of hard to believe <laughs> that people struggle to find the baguette again. I know every location is different, every state and city. It's because it's a white shirt and I can see like soil from the leaves. Um, coffee break, but literally such a beautiful plant. Obsessed with it. I, like I said, it's really, really slow. You, you can propagate it, but it's, it's, it takes a while. <laughs> it takes a while. 
Ah, so good. Mm -hmm. Next up, this one. Well, whatever. I'm feeling, honestly, I'm feeling this one right now. This is a very basic plant. But it's very deep in my heart. I'm an emotional person, you guys. <laughs> and I was raised by both my grandmas, especially my, my mom's side, having a lot of plants inside. And I would always see this in a, in a glass container. And it has just become my favorite. It's just so easy to find. Very beautiful. Like, I, there's some people that hate it. And there's people that find it annoying that I talk about this a lot. But, like, y'all, we're so blessed. <laughs> like, how, look at that beautiful, the freckles of gold. You can see a little bit of, like, matter of deposit from the watering. But it is beautiful. It just glows. <sighs> and then, like, there's this other one. I think it just goes based off light to maturity, but some people say it's the Hawaiian golden potos. I think it's the same thing, but I don't know to Easter own. I don't want to offend anybody. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but my opinion, um, I think it's the same thing. I noticed that when I give my potos a lot of light, as you can see over here, they will literally put up more brighter, more saturated, and more freckles, or even sometimes even big chunks of um of the variegation, the the yellow, nice golden yellow variegation. And then if I let it something like sometimes I'll have my vines going like in my shelves. And by the way, my shelves are from IKEA. People always ask me, I got them like a long time ago. They're pretty great, they're glass, so light keeps going through. I don't know, I think I pay like $60 for each, but it's totally worth it. They last me for a super duper long time. My girl lets it from Amazon too, because people always ask. Um, if you want, just like leave a comment um where the girl lets it from and I'll reply and pin it as well where I got them from. They're from Amazon. I just put grow lights and it's like the two head. They have a three head version, but I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I noticed that whenever I make my potos, like Momonjula or my golden potos, like kind of making it go up, like not even needing the, the air roots, which is those little things in every leaf in the bottom right there. It doesn't need to be like clinging on something as long as the vine has support to go up. I noticed, especially on my, on my potos enjoy, they were getting big leaves and also my jade um potos is it jade potos i think so because this is jade scandapsis <sighs> my brain's like getting wired but it's a beautiful plant i love it a lot i would always see a lot of my childhood very affordable extremely fun to propagate water this is one of the plants you can propagate in almost anything and it's gonna like literally develop into a whole new plant very easily obsessed with this plant I love it so much. You cannot really go wrong with it. I, I, there's a reason why you see these everywhere because they're amazing as beginner plants and as gifts. It's very forgiving. Like if you, for example, you can see it's kind of bald over here. I can just literally give it a nice haircut, propagate those cuttings in water. And I don't like propagating water, but um, go ahead and put those are an exception because they're just so easy to do it on. And then I'll make a honey plant with that and then I'll push out new growth on top. Um, I'll fertilize it and give it a good grow light to promote growth on top instead of just doing it at the bottom where I cut it from. But it's a really, really easy plant to, you know, water. It does not give a damn about humidity. Temperature is not a problem. Lighting is not a problem too. Obviously the lower the light gets, it's gonna be pushing out more green leaves than the variegated that you're seeing right now. And you can even see more variegated if you give it more light. Not direct sunlight. House plants, okay. I'm gonna say this, but <laughs> I don't wanna fan anybody. So by the way, that sound is from the fish tank. I don't want to unplug it. Um, I kind of do like a little bit. It's like a background audio, but what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of plants, house plants, that um, can do full on sun. Okay. <laughs> a lot of our plants are literally trees. Like, for example, this one. Yes, I'm going to brag. I love this plant so much. This is my, oh, the name. Oh, here it is. Ficus Shiveriana, which by the way has dropped in price. And also I saw on Facebook, I forgot the company, it sounds like a frog something, but they have them uh, for super duper cheap at Kruger or Trader Joe's. I think it's Kruger. But people are going crazy and you can find one of these. I don't have a Kruger in my location, I think so. I do have a Trader Joe's, there's only like two locations in San Antonio. But this is a tree and it's also a house plant. This is also, the fiddle leaf is also a tree. This is a tree. Okay, do we have so many plants? Monsteras, literally in the natural habitat, get full blast on sun. They climb at the very top of the trees. There's a lot of plants that are full on sun. The reason why they say to keep your plants away, and I'm saying this because like, listen girl, 
you can put your plants in full-on sun and obviously they're gonna grow a lot faster they're gonna put out a lot more variegation majority of plants because some is also by genetics i think so but you can convert that it's very simple it is like a process but it's very rewarding i had my fiddle leaf because my, my fiddle leaf was struggling a while back and now i gave it to my grandma <laughs> it's okay and it was going through a lot it dropped a lot of its leaves because we moved at that time and i placed it straight outside it burns almost like 90 percent of the growth and i just kept watering it right literally a week later on i started seeing sprouts and I gave it a haircut, and then a couple of days later on, days, I saw even more sprouts. It was gonna get really, really bushy. I kept watering it every day. It was getting like six, seven hours of full-on sun. Well, back then, and it was doing perfectly fine in the apartments when I had an apartment. The fiddle leaf, the massive fiddle leaf, it was in grow lights for like 10 hours. <sighs> and um, it was growing so fast because it was getting a full blast on sun. So, a lot of plants can handle spider plants can handle full on sun. The thing is, they, at the end of the day, they just need to develop like ISO like sunscreen. They need to get hardened off, you know, so they can handle the full on sun. So yeah, if you wanna put your plants outside and it's pretty fun to do, honestly, and this in the winter, you can put it in your garage and get one of these big grow lights. They're pretty cheap on Amazon, like $40, $50. And leave it there for like a couple months when until it gets nice and warm outside and you can leave it outside. But when I get home, I'm 1000% gonna have some house plants, make an arrangement, I really wanna do that so bad, of house plants. Like putting a fiddle leaf on the middle that I propagated and like golden potos or like, literally a manjula potos, mother queen potos, like literally anything around that as an arrangement. And I wanna do all of it by propagations because it's super duper fun. And I wanna have them outside on the bottom of a tree or in the garage. Obviously their house plants are tropical, so they need a lot of water. They need to stay nice and moist. But that's a whole different thing. Um, you can literally harden off your plants. Because I don't know, I, I see a lot of like people saying like, and I get it, why? Because like, if you buy a plant, give the intentions to have it inside, sure, in direct light, you don't want to put it to direct light because it will get burnt. But you can put it on direct light, you just gotta harden it off. Some plants do not like full on sun. For example, neon potos do a lot better in shaded conditions. Um, I have a neon potos on the list too. I'm rubbing way too much. It's just, that's something that I'm so like, I guess, <sighs> I just feel it. it it's cause I, I see a lot of my family members and like, they they say like they wanna put their plants outside, but like they don't, we live in Texas y'all. Like we have like nine months of warmth. I, I, get, I think it's, it gets cold on the first, all the way to the third, right? Three months of like cold temperatures, right? But the rest, like the rest nine months, is full on hot, it's humid. So, and I'm like, you can put them outside. And they want to put them outside, but they're like, no, because I read online that you can't. I'm like, you can, you just gotta harden them off. So that's why I'm saying this, because like, if you wanna put your plants outside, you can, it just depends where you live. But we're gonna move on. <laughs> Golden portals are really, really beautiful. These also do get extremely massive. Um, you can buy some in Etsy already, like really, really big and mature for pretty cheap, but I love Golden Potos. They're always gonna be my favorites, always, forever. They're just so beautiful, like, how can you not like that? Like, <laughs> just because it's common, like, are you for real? It's like, it's so cheap, so easy, so easy to give for free to like friends and family. And it's beautiful. Like, how can you not love that? Like, ugh. and they give you that tropical feeling indoors for cheap and without giving you too many problems. Isn't that what we want? But I do know that a lot of people are collectors and they want to have like really, really cool stuff, so I get that too. All right, next plant, cause girl, I was rambling too much over that. Next up is going to be this variegated string of hearts. It's one of my favorites. It's honestly beautiful. The thing is, it looks a lot more majestic, like the Mykins, which I surprisingly do not have. I used to have it, but removed and I lost it, but this looks a lot better when the morning light or like when the sunset, sundown, I don't know what you call it. Um, when the sun goes down, when the sun goes up and it's hitting the leaves, the way this glows like a chain of pink hearts is insane. It looks so beautiful and it's just beautiful. Like also like you chop it and it gets more bushy. Like a lot of plants have that dilemma. And it's something because some plants don't. Like I think the scandapsis just would just give you two. Well, mine. Anyways, it's gorgeous. 
and it just sucks that the camera is not giving it justice because it looks really ugly in the camera it looks dull and sad but this is the burger one i also had the non burger one which was basically burger but it wasn't pink it was the the common one they got from plantarina and it was getting really really big i think it was almost like five feet but we moved and i lost it <laughs> I lost a lot of plants, but it's okay though. I had so many, I had so much fun with them, and now they're with my grandma, and I know she's enjoying them too. So I, I do not mind at all. It's just like all that time, right? It's just like I, I wish I, like, I guess it's, it's kind of rewarding when you can like show your friends, which I consider my friends, the the growth progress on your plants. And I have plants that have grown with me for so long, and I won't have them anymore, which I'm perfectly fine with. Like it's with my grandma's and. They're doing a lot better over there, honestly, in the greenhouse. But it's sad that I cannot show you. <laughs> it's, it's just going based on my word. I can't really, like, show you by, like, you know, experience. But this was super duper cute. It came from a little tiny pot. And I was just getting super duper big, super duper long. And I do have it outside, which is making it grow really, really big. And I do want to propagate this. I do have a video. How to propagate it. There's a lot of ways to propagate it. You can just get a string and chop it. Or you can get, like, you can, I think it's Plantarina's method. It's not... She's not the first one that came up with it, but I know it because of her. You hang the plants, you put a plant, like a basic uh, a container or a, a pot with soil, and you put the vines like that, right? just like that. And then over time, the nodes would touch the soil, so they're gonna root. And then within like, I think like a month, just depends. You can chop it, and then you have a whole free plant, you know, without losing a lot of those cuttings. So there's that. And then it's my method that I, well, not my method, but my favorite method, which is the butterfly method, because you get a lot more vines. And um, I gotta stop saying that, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my favorite method to propagate plants. Basically, you get a vine and each pair of leaves, right? You can see a pair. Each one has like its own little pair. You just chop it in the middle and you place that in sphagnum moss or in soil, whichever your favorite propagating medium is, which it could be perlite too, it's whatever. Um, I'm trying to stop saying ums, they will make a whole new plant, each little pair. I love that method. I want to propagate it, but then I don't want to. Oh, look at this little baby is coming out. That is the cutest thing ever. And it's not going to focus. I don't know why. That is so cute. I want to propagate it, but then I don't. Because I like how like long it's getting. I probably should. The only pain about this plant is that it tangles up really, really easily compared to a lot of other vining plants. But it's okay. I don't, I, I know some people want their vines to be separate. I don't really mind when it gets all messy and crazy. I just want it to be like a chain, like, you know, whatever. Now, you do want to get this a lot of light. Indirect light is better to make it grow faster. It is, I think it's like, it like, they like to be treated almost like succulents. They don't like to stay moist. I just finished watering it, but I do let this get bone dry. And yeah, so pretty, pretty easy to look after. Very gorgeous, very beautiful. And I got this from a plant shop. You can usually find these at plant shops pretty easily. And it is such an iconic plant for Valentine's because I know it's so cliche, um, but it's a heart <laughs> and it's pink. Like I actually do love Valentine's a lot. I love the, the color. I love the color red and decor, and especially in Christmas as well. And the pinks look really, really good. Red and pink looks really good in plants, like in decor wise, I noticed that. So. Very good of hearts, really, really fun to grow, and they grow pretty fast if you give them warmth, a good amount of light. I have mine in the balcony, which gets really bright in direct light, but it's away from direct light. But I'm pretty sure you can literally have it in direct light if you want to. You just gotta harden it off, so. Oh, it's so good. It's because I made it strong. <laughs> Usually, coffee, I know it's kind of bad, but coffee has been coming out like like tea like just beans and water it's just it's not as strong as i remember it and it's because my body's getting used to it i know i don't drink that much coffee people think i drink a lot of coffee i don't i drink like two cups in the morning and i say that because my mugs they're not a cup they're like two cups my mug is a pretty big mug two cups and then in the day like right now like five or six i want another boost of caffeine um because i have to do something right or I just want to chill so I make that, which is another cup of coffee. So I don't drink a lot of coffee. Like people think I drink a lot of coffee, but I don't. Am I addicted? Yeah, <laughs> but I don't drink a lot <laughs> coffee. 
Next up is this Baltic Blue, and it's funny because I used to hate this plant. I used to hate it so much. I used to hate it a lot. But I learned that just like she likes her water, I like like just like I like my coffee, she likes to stay hydrated. The reason why I struggle with this plant so much is because it does not like to dry out. Uh, it is a pothos. I think it's in a paper. I don't even know what it is. It's called the Baltic Blue Pothos. But it could be a preparing I don't know. Look how long she she's all big. She's grown a lot. Cool thing about this plant is it looks it, okay, so it's like a silver blue, honestly. Except it's green, not blue. But the philistrations look like a silver blue. Except they would do this even if they're vining. They, they don't need to climb. A lot of plants need to climb to develop these really cool philistrations, but that's really, really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> this is so cool. I, I, the, it's just very unique you know doesn't need special care to develop those really cool cool fenestrations and i'm really surprised how i'm very pleased how long she's she's got so it's a really very fun plant like i said this one doesn't like to dry out like the second you let it dry out it's because i guess you can say if i can get a vine i'm pretty tough with my plants everybody knows that so like <laughs> so they'll be like you're going so rough on your plants they're tough and this household, we, you know, anyways, so the gap, it doesn't even, even matter about the light, honestly. I noticed this. It's just, that's what I hate about it, but it's, it's okay. The gap, it's so big by leaf. And then the, from the, the, the vine all the way to the actual, I don't know the technical terms, but from here all the way to the leaf, it's so big too. It looks very sparse. They look, they look like vines, and if it drops its leaves, it looks like wire. I'm not into that. I'm not into that. I, I tried, and I had a moment when I was okay with it, but then it just looks so unhealthy. It doesn't look like I like my. I'm a foliage person, y'all. I'm, I'm not a vine person. Me personally, I just don't like that. <laughs> I, I like lush. I like foliage. I want to see the colors. I want to see even if it's just all green. I want to see big, bold green leaves not vines am i selling even though i have it i have it on the shelf it's a beautiful plant i do love how it i think that's what i just like about it that it's unique about it that it doesn't need to be going up to develop these really cool fenestrations i love that a lot because sometimes i i i mean this is pretty cool i love when leaves do that some i remember like one of my family members they're not really into plants but they saw it in one of my plants and they're like you have bugs and i'm like what and then he pointed out on this and I was like, oh no, some plants do that. Like they develop like holes or like they call fenestrations. Um, it's normal. <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay. I was like, girl, you almost freaked me out. I hate bugs, which is funny because I like plants. I like other plants, but I do not like bugs. I do not like spiders. The second I see a spider, I don't care. I'm a trigger some people, but I don't care. I would get my vacuum and suck it up. I do not like spiders. And they do not like me. Okay, so. But box of blues are for the win. They're stupid and cool. I don't know why they call it blue. It's not blue. <laughs> I guess I, I have seen some that do give off that bluish hue, but maybe you need to give it a lot, a lot, a lot of light. Cause mine don't do that, and the ones that I've been seeing at the stores don't. And this one's outside, in the very dark corner. But still, like I don't know. It's a very beautiful plant, though, y'all. Like I do like it. And again, this is from Costa Farm, so like. You can find it on like Lowe's and Home Depot. Pretty easy to find this plant. Also Walmart. I don't know if I'm the only one that... Has anybody found any good plants at their Walmart? Like, no, honestly, like, just like, let me, like, you don't gotta see what you found. Like, has anybody found anything good on Walmart? I've been going to Walmart for so long to a lot of locations and none of them are having good house plants, like, at all. I don't know why. I don't, like, I don't know if Costa Farm is like, we don't like Walmart no more or like, what's going on? It's been... I guess you can say like two months already, which feels like a year. <sighs> What's going on, Walmart? Like, pull through. Like, I, I don't know why I haven't seen. And Walmart tends to have the, like a dollar cheaper plant compared to Lowe's. First, it, it, used to, it used to be like in this order, Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot. Uh, the, on the price range, Walmart would have like $2 cheaper. Lowe's would have it like a dollar cheaper. And then Home Depot would just have it like full on. But now Home Depot and Lowe's are like, they have the same price range on plants. And then Walmart is still pretty cheap on plants. So I like that a lot. But oh, I haven't been finding any plants. I'm like, what's going on? Unless they're getting like very picked up very fast. 
which I highly doubt because like it's always empty in the garden center. <laughs> I don't know. But beautiful Baltic blue. I used to hate this plant. I had it twice. One time I got it. Why well, I got it? Because I was like, oh, it's a new plant, right? It was just an impulse buy. And then oh, what happened to it? It was okay. And then we moved and I left it. <laughs> which by the way, I, the plants, a lot of plants that I do leave when I move, which I'm not, we're not moving with my grandmas anymore. Honestly, I don't think so. We were going to be going with an actual legit rental company. She's legit, but I don't want to do with family. And it's so true. People were telling me a lot of times, like, don't move with family. Or like, even like in that case, my grandma had her rental property. Don't do that with family. I was young. I didn't listen, but you learn with your mistakes. You learn with oh, with experience, right? So not with family, oh, not with family no more. So we're gonna go with an actual company. I, I wanna go with Progressive Residential, but a lot of people have been telling me that like, don't go with them because they're bad. <laughs> I just like the website. I, I like how like, and I actually have, I'm paying for like, I think I don't know subscription, but I did pay something so I can tour the homes. Cause you need to pay like $3 to tour the homes. And you need to like give them your ID and stuff. Not your social, but like your ID. And I love that. I, I like. I love that I don't have to talk to a person. I'm, I'm very antisocial. I get very insecure and stuff like that. I know it's dumb. I know, but I can't control it. Trust me. Like I beat myself up for it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I like that. You don't got to. It's all by the app or the website. Honestly, I love that. But I've been hearing so many horror stories of Progressive Residential, which is a rental company. They're big. I'm even on the Facebook group, which is massive. So. I don't know, boyfriend and I were talking about just going with uh, on Zillow and looking for rental properties and just contacting the, the you know, the usually has like a phone number. We're trying to find like an actual, because a lot of times there's couples, you can usually find like a holiday couple or like, you know, a couple renting their home, uh, just doing like that or, I don't know. But I like Purgus Residential because you can see all their houses, it tells you everything. There's very rarely ever like any human contact, it's just all by online. But that's what makes it scarier because people have been having a lot of problems and they get they struggle to like find somebody to fix them and also i've heard they're like very predatory on like extracting your money they love charging fees and stuff like that so i don't know but y'all like we're gonna enter i think august and then september and then october november december and the year is done so <laughs> Our release ends on December. Our goal is to move out by November, and we're also and our goal is also to be looking by October. And by the time we're on November already, we already have some houses in mind. I don't want to be rushed, uh, and especially when we're going to be looking for a home, we don't want to rush for too much. So we want to like take our time and like try to find good houses and stuff like that. Uh, enough rambling. I'm sorry. Next up is going to be this one, which I was feeling a lot yesterday i don't feel it right now that much but it's this beautiful mistletoe cactus she's really really cute right it almost looks like that hoya and honestly when i saw it the first time i thought it was that but it's not it's a mistletoe cactus it's really really beautiful very unique as well this will look really really cool one of those face pots honestly it's gorgeous and i like it because it's very easy to look after and how there's no leaves. Okay, this is the only exception that I allow. <laughs> it's all vines. I think there's very, very tiny leaves, but they're extremely tiny. But it's just all this. It's pretty impressive how this is how it's producing its energy. It's, this is how it's, it's photosynthesizing. It doesn't need, need massive leaves. It's just doing it by the stem. Majority of it since it's green. And I love it a lot. It's pretty unique. I like it. And I got it from Lowe's. A lot of my plants are from Lowe's, you guys. <laughs> I don't go that fancy. Um, <laughs> but it's really, really cute. And the main reason why I like it a lot is because it's, it's one of the most magic plants. I think I have, I have, I, have, I think I have a list of plants that just like, have like that, like, I'm not gonna try to do the audio, but like, magical vibe. Like micans, the way the sunlight hits them, like gentle, right? Not full on, like afternoon, noon, sunlight, it will burn the micans, but afternoon, if not the morning, when you see that, the micans glow a beautiful color and they glitter, they shimmer. Barragas Chica Parts also do the same thing. They don't shimmer, but they do glow pink, which is beautiful. This one, when you water it, the water droplets, they don't, like, they stay 
at the tips and you can see like a lot of tips right so it looks like like ornaments it's so beautiful and it's just small things like that i'm sorry it's just small things like that that like makes things special for me um <laughs> it's what it's just so beautiful like i love that a lot and i think i have taken some pictures of that i think i do have a community post on that on facebook on um, instagram which is facebook too it's so beautiful i like it a lot and it i don't know that's that's what makes it very special to me because I've, I've been watering my plants with a watering hose now and even though when it rains it it does that and it's just such a beautiful thing not a lot of plants do that because they have leaves but this one's just so unique you guys and again it's cheap <laughs> i'm a cheap person semi but beautiful it's just so beautiful mitzvah cactus you can usually find it literally anywhere Next up, we have the Skandapsis, which is funny because I am not a big Skandapsis person. I try to be, and I've actually had a little phase, but they're kind of expensive, and they're just weird. I had the Silver Splash Skandapsis, which was doing so good. I got it by a little cutting, but they always get really, really leggy. And somebody told me, like, just give it a lot of light, but I'm like, a lot of plants that I have, vining plants that I have, they get the same amount of light as scandapsis, but I'm guessing the scandapsis wants more lights. And I'm like, you're not that girl. This one is though. This one's really, really cute. And I'll explain why this is a lot more special to me than any other scandapsis, which there are some really cool scandapsis. I do have a silver hero. I have the silver splash. Um, I have the moonlight scandapsis. I have a, I do have the exotica. No, it's, it's the little tiny one. It's like, it looks like this one, but it's not because my boyfriend got it for me. And then this light's not even on. I think I have another Skandapsis. Oh, that's basically it. But this one is called the uh, Skandapsis Exotica, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I even Googled it and it does look like this one. The reason I'm saying I'm not sure is because I saw it on Facebook. Somebody's saying like, that's not what it's called. So, I don't know. But this is stunning. I do love, the reason I love it is because the leaves. They're huge. They're massive. Look at that. Look how big these leaves are. It's such a statement. Like, I don't think it's only sent how big. Look. That's really cool. That's pretty impressive. Now it is starting to get leggy. So what I like to do, I just throw it above. That's literally what I do. And then it's regla. Um, the leaves are getting a little bit bigger. Because I hate that. And I was, you can see it here. I, this one, it's loose because I just moved it. But this one was getting, was giving me really tiny leaves. And then I put it on top and look. So maybe, yeah, maybe they do like a lot of light. So picky. <sighs> Demanding, but I guess it's, it is pretty rewarding. So I guess I will try to put my other plants and more light miscondapsis, which I, I'll share my, my silver here. It's actually really, really funny right now. But this condapsis is beautiful. And again, it's pretty cheap and you can find it almost anywhere. Especially with Urban Jungle, I've been seeing it a lot with them. And almost a lot of these plants that I have with me, except the Mandula, okay, except the Mandula Potos and the Morbacan Potos, which is the next one. Those and the, ne the Neon Potos too, they do get money bugs. But all these other plants that I'm talking about, they really don't get any pests. I don't, I haven't had any pest problems. So that's, what they're, that's pretty cool about them too. So I had to put it down because it was getting really, really heavy. <laughs> All right, next up, which is what I was telling y'all. This one's really, really heavy too, so let's see. I have this Mandula in this chair. I'm gonna move it back and see if you guys can see this. As I'm rambling, you guys can see the plants. Yeah, so that's what I do with this one then. Beautiful Mandula. Next up is going to be the, my Marble Queen Potos, which some can say is a Snow Queen Potos, but I think it's the same thing. And I'm gonna keep saying that because the way they sell them differently on Etsy, a Snow Queen and Marble Queen, especially back then, the Snow Queen was so expensive, and I'm just like, because it was harder to find. But girl, just give, give your Marble Queen put this a lot of light. Maybe it's not a Snow Queen, but it'll literally look like a legit Snow Queen. Just give your Marble Queen a lot of light, and that's what would happen. But this is my Marble Queen Potos. It's pretty big. One of my oldest babies. I think she's like two years already with, with me. I think, I think it's two years. Look how big <laughs> she is. She's like this massive planter. Pretty big. Also that's mineral deposit, so don't forget about that. 
look at her. She did have some mellies and I have been washing it off and I'm happy to say it's working. Um, <laughs> uh, what I do, I just put my plants when they have money bugs, I put them in the tub, I, was, I wash them off with water and then I spray neem oil with water and Dawn dish soap and then that's it. Sometimes this one needed like another application. So two days later on, I saw still mellies in it. So I put it in the tub, did the same thing, and I don't see no mellies, literally at all. And I did that treatment three days ago. Usually my mini bugs are pretty fast. I'll always see them like pretty fast, but it's controlling the population, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I do see one, but it's in the back of the leaf. I see another one. I, I think it's like the, cause it, there's mealybugs and then which look like fuzzy dots and then they have like their nest like of eggs or something like that and it looks like a cotton ball. It's like all like, it doesn't look like an actual like turd drop, it looks like just like a mesh of white fuzzy stuff and I think those are the nest. But I'm gonna do this treatment again with her. You can kind of see how nice and shiny. By the way, the Nemo solution does not get rid of mealybugs. More preventative it's not gonna take care of the problem for that fast almost a lot of things don't really do that but and i think about the legit stuff which are pretty aggressive but <sighs> yeah from what i heard captain jacks is pretty good rubbing alcohol is amazing it kills them in an instant especially when you dab them with a q-tip you dip the q-tip on rubbing alcohol and then and she's happy but she's just so pretty i'm just so proud of her like how big she is <laughs> You dip the, the Q-tip on rubbing alcohol and then you dab it on the mealybug. And I don't know how it works. Like you would just dab it and they burst. I don't know how that works, but you'll see like like orange, yellowish coming just like a smear of it. It's pretty satisfying. I kind of like it. So there's that. So it's beautiful. I do like it a lot. But I have noticed that these mealybugs have been liking my, my work in photos. I mean, not too close to my collection because I don't want it to spread. You guys can barely see it now. She's super cute, y'all. I love photos and so much that. Uh, and I think the plants that I'm talking about, except for my Manjula photo, she, she's gonna be outside. Um, I'm gonna put these in the tub and then wash them off and also water them and spray a Nemo solution and then just do like, because they were touching and stuff like that. I probably have a melee on me. I don't think so, because like you can usually see it, but. Next up is going, lastly, it's going to be my Neon Potos. Neon Potos are honestly really, really fun. If you do not have a Neon Potos, you're missing out. I'm sorry. Like, I guess I'm just kidding. You're not missing out anything, but I really do love Neon Potos. They're super duper cool. They don't need a lot of care. They actually, they, they like their space. They, like, honestly, like, they look so bright. You would think they need so much light but they grow really, really good in indoor conditions. They grow really, really good almost in any wall. If there's like a window nearby, it doesn't matter what direction, it kind of doesn't matter, but I have it in the living room and I even have this in the kitchen, 20 feet away from the window. It was it was doing perfectly fine. It was just getting light from the, the ceiling. The, what do you call them? I was gonna say HD, LED lights? Uh, I was gonna say about, too about the golden potos, they don't need a lot of light. You can even get them like office light, I guess I can say that. So that's pretty cool about golden potos, but also neon potos. They don't need that. They don't need like that fancy stuff like grow lights. They'll do perfectly fine. But, like it's just so crazy like how plants have like their own like, you know, characteristics. Like they look almost the same. They act the same, but some are more tolerant than others. And neon potos is that girl that like, she doesn't need all I care. I don't have it staked. <laughs> Y'all know me, I don't stake my plants. This is where I bought it at my local grocery store, H-E-B, which is only in Texas. But I've heard that he wants to spread out. And h is pretty great. I like it a lot. It's like Walmart, but a little bit more bougier because they have a lot more options. It's like Walmart because they're pretty affordable prices, but they have a lot of options like Trader Joe's. Um, it's pretty cool. And they'll have a pretty cool plant selection too. So. <laughs> Yay! I love these a lot and they also, they work with Max and Miles, which I've actually, actually worked with before and they're such a great company. I love Max and Miles so much. So, Neon Potos are just so cool. Like they look so bright. If you have a dark corner in your house and there's a window, 
in your living room, which there should be, or in your room, you can pop that neon potos in the darkest corner of that room and it will give it that pop of color and it will do perfectly fine. Pretty crazy, girl. Not a lot of plants can do that. <laughs> Here's another neon potos. I have another one in the kitchen and that's just no grow lights. And I think now I want to show it to you. I, I have giving out some updates. You guys can usually see it in the background when I'm filming in the living room and health and stories, you guys do see it. My neon potos in the kitchen is like, 25 feet away from the living room windows and there, there's a window in the room that enters that passes through, like the light passes through the bedroom to like the kitchen because the door is open but i live in an apartment by the way so it's just crazy it's surviving it's been there for two months i think so or yeah almost two months and it's putting out new leaves it looks perfectly healthy i haven't seen no yellow leaves which usually means like it could mean like it's like getting enough light or nutrients or a lot of times, especially with vining plants, and if you have a plant in a dark spot, they'll put out yellow leaves because they need, you know, light. But the neon potos is perfectly satisfied with the kitchen light, which is pretty crazy. So, and I also have golden potos. The two plants that I keep talking about that like don't really need natural sunlight, they can do perfectly fine with like, is it called fluorescent? God damn it, I forgot the word. Like just basic LEDs. <laughs> so pretty cool. I have a neon photos in there. I have another neon photos in here. This is the one my boyfriend got me. Let's see it. It was in a tiny little pot, and she upgraded to a nice wider pot. Really excited for her to grow. And then I have another. I guess that's it. Wait, no, I do. Oh, here's my other. This is from Cuttings. Neon photos, and I did have two massive neon photos. One of them was my, my oldest Leon Potos, but I left it on my grandma's. <laughs> and it's okay though. Like, it does make me sad when I see it because I'm like, she's been with me for like three years. My grandma's super, super sweet. She's like, you can always take it. And I'm like, no, girl, no. She looks a lot happier with you. <laughs> it's okay though because like we have other Leon Potos here and it's the same thing. And I'm going to build new memories with them. But such a fun plant, y'all. <laughs> like, Leon Potos are really, really cool. I know it's because I. I have a lot of plants that are my favorites or a lot of people are like those are very very basic plants so it's not that fancy but I'm very satisfied with, with like common plants they're just so cool for me and don't get me wrong the rare plants are also pretty cool too I do have some rare plants one of my proudest one is my Berger de Monstera Peru that one's doing really really good um again it just depends on your environment because like I mean where you live because Manjula Potos might be rare for some of y'all because y'all can barely find it but here in San Antonio, like, we always see them in the big box stores. So it just depends where you live. If you live in Florida, a lot of the plants that are rare almost everywhere, you can literally get it, like, at a, at a plant shop pretty easily because <laughs> it's Florida, right? So a lot of the plants that I have are pretty good. I got a question with y'all. So I don't know if it's a disease, but my alocasia has been putting out some new leaves that are like, they look variegated. Can y'all see that? Some of them do look like um, damaged because this is damaged, a lot of that is damaged. But they've been showing that when they're very tiny, they do not have any spider mites. So that's something that allocate, um, allocations are prone to. So you can see it over here too. And you can actually find it a lot of the time in the big box stores some variegated allocations. I'm not sure that's what I got. Possibly not. It could just be damage, honestly. Because I know this is damaged, but there's other markings that look very different than that. Like, where is it? Like the ones that I showed y'all. So I don't know what's going on. Allocations are so finicky with me, like, they're very weird. I don't know why. Allocations and scandapsis. They just never work out with me. Uh, different back yes too, but my different back yet camouflage still going strong. I do have it on a very stronger light, so I think that's why it's doing pretty good. Which is funny because a lot of people say different back yes can handle low light conditions, but like mine do not like that whatsoever. They would, I don't know, maybe I don't know. I, I can try again, but they always go downhill. And that's basically you guys on all the plants that are my favorite vine plants. This almost became like just a chit chat video. Like if you came over to my apartment and you're like, hey, what are your plants? 
and I'm gonna be telling my favorite plants, but also giving you some like chisme, <laughs> like giving you some like life stuff as well. I just can't stay in one topic. My brain just goes to everything, especially with coffee, but I feel really, really good right now. I feel great without it, but the coffee, if you know, you know, you get like a nice boost. Like some people, like stuff is like, I don't know, tea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mine is just coffee. Mine makes me super duper happy. Especially right now. I have coffee because it's so hot. And so I'm still feeling like a little bit chit-chatty. By the way, those are all the bunny plants. That's all I wanted to see. That's basically that. But I do want to show you guys some other plants that I think deserve a little bit of a spotlight. I keep looking at everything and I'm kind of happy that I put all of my plants back in the plant room. I kind of missed it. I was okay without it, but I kind of missed it again. I can see everything. <laughs> I was on the balcony too. But I guess this one's that's making me really, really excited. I'm a little bit concerned because I'm not sure what's gonna happen. But this is a variegated well fence in Tiberia, which is pretty cool. Um, this was the well fence in Tiberia in general, which I do have one over here, was extremely rare back then. Like very expensive, y'all. And then I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And now you can find them pretty, and you can almost find them in any plant shop for a pretty good price. But I have this one, like, this has been with me for so long, <laughs> like three years. And this is all it has done for me, so I don't know. But this is my Wolf and Sotivaria. I should probably put it back. And then I, this is my variegated one. And I have another variegated one. And I have another one too. I have a lot of them because a company sent them to me, but. The first one that I showed you, the, just the green one, I got it from my local nursery. This is how it looks, right? It's just super cute. She put out a baby or a new leaf, which is really exciting because all it was is just this leaf. The thing is, I don't see no variegation. And I do know that snake plants, you can propagate any snake plants, right? You just take a leaf. There's division and there's propagation, which are two different things. If you just chop a leaf and you put it in water or in soil, it would do a little baby, but it will revert back to green to its original if you want the variegation the way you got to do it is by division so division basically means like you have a plant and i can show you right now actually but but let me show you so this is my peace lily and this is jessica she came from a one cutting i mean one plant and now there are so many plants she throws she throws out a lot of side shoots and there's a lot of side shoots in there basically divisions you just separate them that's what it looks so uh, this one doesn't look variegated <laughs> i'm not sure now my monstera peru i did notice when it puts out a new leaf my variegated monstera peru when it puts out a new leaf it's not variegated at all but a uh, over time you see the variegation this one has i don't see no variegation and in this one you can even tell on the back so i'm not sure if it's gonna revert now i do know too as well Sometimes it's still variegated, but since it's putting out another leaf and it only has one leaf or it doesn't have enough energy, it's gonna put a green one and maybe another green one. And so the plant gets enough energy, then they'll start putting up variegation because where it's variegated, they cannot photosynthesize. I'm not a plant expert, but I have done this for like six years already. Over time I have learned some things, girl. <laughs> so I'm a little bit concerned, but even then I'm really, really happy that it's doing this because I was getting bored of this one leaf. I thought it was cute for a moment, like it looks super duper cute, but I'm getting bored and I wanna see more action going on. So this is what happened. I do have another one as well. And I have it on a really good grill light. Also this one too, because I want them to give me something. But here's this one and I still don't see nothing sprouting. And this one is also very good, but it's like a nice creamy looking. It's very cool and you know what I'm seeing. I'm ready. I just squished it. Damn, you know what I noticed as well, y'all? Y'all, many bugs have been going after my snake plants. For so long, I was like, my snake plants rarely ever get any pest problems. Oh no, I'm gonna spray this entire room. I'm just squishing, squishing them with my thumb. Like, let me show you. There's one over here. You can kind of see where I squished it. I'm gonna wash my hands, it's okay. I'm not gonna eat after this and I'm already done drinking my coffee. You just squish it and it's like red. It's like, I don't know, it's like orange, this, their blood. I'd rather squish them right now and then just leave them and forget about it. 
and then they're just gonna multiply. I wanna squish it right now. And I don't, none of my references are very good. Like, so I'm gonna spray my collection. It'll be best if when I water them, because they all have trays, that's how I water my plants, I just top water them, but it'll be, I really, I think it's best, but it's just so much work, but, ah, it would be best if I like, when it's time to water, instead of just watering it like that, I just take them to the tub and I top water them and then I, I spray neem oil as a preventative to stop the spreading, right? But y'all don't know how many plants they have? Like, you know how long that would take? So, I guess I'm gonna, ah, I'm gonna rinse that off in the tub. I guess, I don't know, okay. Because I want to film everything a lot of the time, but I think in this case, I should just chill. And I'm gonna just do it by myself off camera. And listen to some music, maybe some classical music, because for some reason, I find it funny when I take care of my plants playing classical music, because it's just funny to me. Like, it's like so much is going on. I kind of like it. Um, this one's also going to get treated too. I'm going to rinse it off in the tub. <sighs> God damn it. But yeah, that plant doesn't have any new leaves. Um, uh, I'm happy. It's because. It's not that bad right now, the bit of bug infestation. Back then, I actually used to have it really, really bad. And it was actually last year where I had it bad and also aphids. I had aphids and it was bad. <laughs> and I got depressed, y'all. Like, I, I'm not diagnosed depressed, but like, I didn't want to look at my plants. And obviously not looking at them or taking care of them. They were going even more downhill. I was struggling to get out of bed. I didn't want to get out of the room. Because I have plants in the kitchen, I have plants in the living room, I have plants in the plant room, in the balcony. Wherever I went, I would see plants and I would just see them sad. And I'm like, girl, I'm sad too. And then that's, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I pushed to move out. Because I was maybe trying to run away from my problems. And having the water holes, y'all. Having the water, water holes and even a yard makes life a little bit easier. You don't need that to like handle and have plants and do that kind of stuff. But it 1000% makes life a lot easier. What I'll basically do when I have the property, I any plant, like if my plants have spider mites, aphids, millibugs, and this will fix the problem like 90, 90% of the time. If not, it'll need to be treated again. I always just place, I'll walk around the house and I'll pick up plants that are infested with anything, which we usually were like one or two. I'll be filming and I'll see and I'm like, oh, I gotta treat that. I'll put it in the porch, the front porch. I'll get the water holes and I'll spray it. Like, I mean, I'll, with the pressure, right? I'll put my thumb and just very, I mean, not trying to rip the leaves. Some are more sensitive than others, right? But I'll do it enough to like knock whatever is in there. And it would also help to like knock out the dust and all that stuff. And then I'll also like deep water it and to remove any excess mineral deposit that was building up in the soil. Cause I use saucers, I water the plants. And that's why I like it because they stay hydrated longer compared to the tub because you water, there's a saucer, the soil will absorb the water, but it will stay trapped in the saucer. So over time, the water will go down because the plant and the soil is taking that water back in. But what happens is the water I use, um, tap water, which has mineral deposit. And just over time, you know, things start building up in the soil. It will just stay trapped. <laughs> so doing that, sometimes it's really, really good to rinse out your plants like once or two times a year, that's what they say. And that would fix the problem. And then sometimes I didn't have to spray anything. If I felt extra, I was spraying neem oil back then or whatever. But just with the water hose by itself, it will fix the problem and it would not come back. So I have an, I have an apartment, three floors above, I don't have the best water pressure, but I'm making the best of it. And I'm just scared that I'm gonna, aphids and spider mites, those are my worst enemies. I can't handle my bugs. They're, they're gentle. They look like white little fuzzy guys. They don't run away, they don't move. Aphids are yellow ones. They, you can see them moving, it grosses me out. And then spider mites, they're, if you zoom in in the, in the if you zoom in, <laughs> you can see it with a microscope, right? Is that what they call it? Telescope? No. <laughs> you can see it, they look like actual spiders a little bit. You can Google it. But you are actually, if you just, with the naked eye, you will get close and you can see them moving around. That grosses me out. So many bugs don't do that at all. They just stay, they chill. You can just smash it like the way that I just did it right now. And yeah, so I guess I'm saying all this because 
I don't want to get to the point that I'm gonna like because I'm doing really good right now like I'm, I'm really satisfied um loving my plants a lot they're doing pretty good some of them are having problems but I feel okay on taking care of them I just don't want to get into a pothole that it gets really really bad and then I'm not gonna want to want to take care of them and it's just gonna go down here from there people say just give away plants or stop, some people would tell me like stop buying plants I buy like one or two plants a month or three plants trust I go I do a lot of plant shopping people tell me like I, I see it like yeah when I go plant shopping I don't I rarely ever buy a plant I saw the massive fiddle that I've been talking about that I want again for 50% off I did not got it I had the money but I was like no because when we're gonna move pretty soon and I do not want to have a lot of boxes of plants <laughs> and then number two I am dealing with money bugs and I'm not the best at treating um, pest control like some people are really good like they like they're pretty fast at it they separate them and I'm not it takes me a while to do that kind of stuff because I'm lazy okay and um I want to bring a new plant just to like add on the list that it's just like you know gonna cause my problems so yeah I don't buy plants y'all I mean the last plant that I bought was the tricolor because I I was in a really good mood and after going to multiple locations I finally found something that was like great and then it was really it was like $21.98 and the, the it's from Urban Jungle I don't want to pick it up because you know money bucks but it's on the, those cash pots that I love a lot with the little tiny legs super they're cute $21.98 uh ficus tricolor the one that I've been looking for and wanting again because I lost a lot of plants remember and it was so lush and bushy I had to get it. I was like, I want a plant. But back then, y'all know, I'll buy a plant, like, I'll buy, like, three plants, five plants a week. Now, I just get between, like, one to, like, three plants a month. And it's been like that for, like, a couple months already. I'm trying to control myself, like I said, for the reason of moving and then also dealing with pests. I don't want to keep adding my plants on my collection, you know, to keep treating. So, I just don't want to get to that point. And I, I saying this makes me feel a little bit better and then i'm hoping that well i don't really wish this on anybody else but it would have helped if i the people that i watch would say this like you know that i guess it, it make it, i don't feel alone and if you feel alone you're not and if because i don't know i had that shame that i wouldn't take care of my plants and i felt like a bad plant parent i'll be like why do i have plants but deep down, I have plants because I love plants. They make me happy. I love having life inside of my home, but I'm just not good at taking care of them, you know? Um, but it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's, it's, I love it. It's what makes me happy. And that's one of the biggest things that makes me happy, other than family. So, and also it is kind of my job a little bit, so. But <laughs> plants are really, really fun. And if you are dealing with like pests and it's summer, so like there's a lot of pests right now. You're not alone, girl. If you have to hear that, you're not alone. We're in this together. I hate saying that because it sounds so cliche, but it's true though, you know? We got this. And if your entire collection goes to crap, just like mine did, it's okay. Just get rid of it. Or don't. Just have them until it gets really, really bad. Like, you're going to want to get rid of it. Or a good chunk of it. Like, it's okay. There are plants. There's always going to be plants at Lowe's and Home Depot. At the end of the day, it's your money. You do whatever you want to do with it. Nobody else can take it with you, you know? What the hell? So, yeah, there's no shame on, like, letting your plants go downhill. Um, but it is really, really satisfying we can bring a plant back to life. And I have done that on some of them. So, to each their own, I rambled enough. This is what happens when I drink too much coffee. And I'm in my coffee really, really strong. <laughs> that sounds so rambling. But ah, I just love being in my plant room. It feels really, really good. The air is not too humid because I've been running the AC Central. <laughs> um... But it just feels like good in here. A lot of these plants are looking so good, y'all. Like, let me show you. This is what I'm seeing. And so, like, I'm always zoning out because I like to see outside. I see a lot of cars passing by with people. Um, but this is what I see, y'all. Like, and this is the one that I was talking about with the tricolor. That's what it's called. I do have the name right there. Ficus Elastica Tricolor. With the pot with the tiny legs. It's so cute. And I just see this and my heart just like, ah. Oh. And I see this and then of course the, the green wall. 
makes me so happy. Extremely, extremely happy. And look, here's a Zebriana. She's still perfectly fine. Ooh, raising a little bit of crispiness. Is that spermites? I kind of just want to rip it out. Oh. Don't tell me. Sh oh. <sighs> but it's okay, though. You know? <laughs> Just gotta keep on trying. It's okay. Some people like to release beneficial insects in their collection, and I just like, I'm so jealous. I want to do that so bad. But y'all know I don't like bugs. That's one of the best things you can do is releasing beneficial insects. Isn't this begonia beautiful? This is the only begonia I've been able to keep alive, and I'm extremely terrified that reporting I'm gonna kill it because that's usually what happens. And look at the back part, that's pretty cool. Can you see that? That's pretty cool. So my boyfriend's just going in, so I'm just taking care of them for him. This one's bouncing back. You can see some new stuff going in. Fun! Beautiful. Beautiful begonias. The snake plants that had melees. And I don't see no melees in them right now. But they will still keep on getting treated. Because that's all I can do. Beautiful skin depths is variegated. Sorry this video came out so long, you guys. It's just I feel really, really good right now, and I love chatting with y'all, especially when I'm caffeinated. <laughs> but this is a collection, and I grow this plant to the balcony. But I'm gonna save that for another video. That is basically it for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this extremely long video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up to let me know. Send me positive advice to each and every one of you guys. And if you haven't seen yesterday's video, yesterday's video. Oh my god, I can't even talk anymore. Go check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!